Hi everyone, sorry about that. I accidentally ended the stream. Um, and it's unfortunate because there was just a shouting match between one of the enforcers and one of the buses. Basically, the bus wanted to unload here. He's not allowed. So the driver put down his window and he's shouting at the enforcer. Mm. It's like you're trying to break the law and then you're going to get angry at him for telling you to stop doing it. So yeah, anyway, let's see what these other buses are doing. This one, I think, also wants to unload. He was told by the enforcer up there not to. So I guess they're going to go further down the road. There is a proper designated stop, but, you know, people are lazy. They don't want to walk. Like I mentioned in my uh, previous stream, people just don't like walking. They like the convenience of getting on and off anywhere. In fact, here's another bus that's trying to unload. They're telling him, no, keep going, keep going. Let's see if he tries to unload. Today's been much better. They've really done a good job at getting them to follow the rules. The driver should be apprehended, yeah. I mean, the problem is, it, when they stop and they sit here arguing with the enforcer, they're causing problems because they're wasting the time of the enforcer, they're blocking a lane on the bus lane. So even if they haven't unloaded yet, they're already causing a nuisance and they're already causing a problem on the road. So yeah, you're right, maybe they should try and give them a ticket for some other reason. But so far, wow, this bus is really loud. So far, it's been very, very good today. Um, there's been very few buses that have like ignored the ignored what they've been told. And, and those that did ignore were given a ticket. Some of these buses are just way too loud. Um, so yeah, like I mentioned in my previous stream, people have to get used to walking. <clears throat> you know, you walk five, ten minutes to the bus stop, and then you ride the bus, and then you walk five, ten minutes to your office. You don't get dropped off anywhere you want. It doesn't work like that in any other country, um, and it shouldn't work like that here because it just adds to traffic, adds to accidents. Both driver and passenger should be penalized. Maybe, but ultimately it's the driver that's in control of the vehicle. He's the one that's going to make the decision to pull over, to open the door. So if he just says no, that's the end of it. Um, so I think holding the driver responsible is really the easiest way to deal with it because he can easily say no. No ma'am, I'm sorry, I can't stop here. If I do, I'm going to get in trouble and I could lose my license or whatever. I could get my franchise in, in trouble. So I think ultimately the drivers have to be the ones that are responsible enough to not do it in the first place. But so far, very, very smooth today. It's going very, very well. It's also about the motorcycles. So you can see they're all using the motorcycle lane, uh, the blue lane. So really, uh, no complaints. It's going so well today. Everything's moving smoothly. Do you think the MMD will con be consistent in implementing this time? <clears throat> I don't think it's an issue of um, being consistent, I think it's an issue of manpower. As I was mentioning in my last stream, you can't have, you know, hundreds of enforcers every five meters along the road. Oh, what's this bus doing? I think he's going to try and unload. Nope, he's being moved on. Oh, is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Please don't do it. Okay, they managed to convince him to keep going. But look at how much effort it takes. Even with all of the enforcers there telling him don't unload, he still pulled right over to the side, slowed down, and he wanted to unload. It's only because there's enough enforcers all the way along the road telling him not to. But, you know, this is not realistic. You can't have hundreds of thousands of enforcers on the road every day. It has to be the drivers that decide to follow the rules. It's just ridiculous to try and, you know, you can't have an enforcer every five meters all the way along the head, so. Oh, what's going on? Something's going on. They're gonna stop this one. Let's go and see. We have seen some coding buses today. Is this guy gonna jump off? I'm not sure what's going on. Let's see. I know there's a passenger there, like just waiting to hop off. So yeah, um, to the question, I don't think it's about consistency. I think it's just not realistic to have so many forces on the road every day. Uh, especially in such a small area. Um, so one of the things that the MMDA are working on is increasing the penalty um, because right now it's literally like the price of a cup of coffee. Um, so that's why the buses often don't care. And if they get caught on CCTV, it's not the driver that will be penalized. It will be the, I don't know, 
I don't know why that guy's waving. Someone's waving. Um, it's not the driver that's going to be penalized if they get caught on CCTV because what happens is all those penalties add up and then when it comes to renewing the franchise, that's when they pay those penalties. And if it's only like 150 pesos, 200 pesos, they're already not that bothered because these bus companies are making big money. Um, so yeah, one of the things they need to do is increase that penalty so it actually acts as a deterrent. If, even now there's a bus like trying to unload. Um, drivers should be educated and attend seminars. The thing is they know they're breaking the rules because look at how many enforcers are standing here telling them, holding signs and you know everything else, telling them don't unload here, it's illegal, it's illegal, it's illegal. And they do it anyway, so it's not about education, it's about simply not caring and not being scared because the deterrent... Sorry, I dropped my microphone there, because the deterrent is so minor. Um, so yeah, hopefully the MMDA can increase those penalties soon. Of course, there's a lot of red tape and legal stuff that goes along with that, um, and that's why it's taking a while. But I think once they do that, it's really gonna make a big difference. And you can see all the bus drivers rubbing their neck like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't drop you off because there's enforcers. But if these enforcers weren't here, they would be doing it. And that's the problem. You can't have like thousands, hundreds of thousands of enforcers every five meters. Um, the expense would be ridiculous. The management would be ridiculous. And honestly, do we need that? Do we need, you know, is the only way I'm going to follow the law is if someone's standing there watching me? I mean, come on. I, I don't think it's fair to blame the MMDA or to blame the PNP. Um, why'd they stop this fan? Let's see what's going on. I think probably because he's in the yellow lane when he shouldn't be. Not sure what he's doing actually, but he's causing a nuisance because he's going so slow. Yeah, not sure what's going on with this one. Shouldn't really be here because now he's blocked off a lane of the bus lane. So yeah, I don't know why he's there. Hopefully they'll deal with that. Um, let's take a little walk up here and see what's going on. Like I mentioned earlier, there are some people standing by the side of the road hoping to load a bus illegally. So they're telling them there's no point waiting here, you're wasting your time because if a bus does pick you up, we're going to stop the bus anyway. Um, so they, you know, they're being forced to go and walk to the proper bus stop. And you know, that's what they should be doing. It's the same as every other country. Yes, you have to walk 5, 10, 15 minutes to the bus stop. They don't just pick you up and drop you off everywhere you want. Um, and, I, and it's working. I mean, look at how smooth the road is. It's actually working. So yeah, for those that have any doubts, it does work. You know, implementing and being strict, it does work and it does make a difference and it is making a difference. If you compare this to Friday, big difference. I know, you know, Monday and Friday traffic, but it was still early morning both days. So it does work. Um, it just, it's just very hard because once they're not here, people will continue to break the law again. That, you know, a lot of people only want to follow the law if someone's really here shouting at them to follow the law. And it shouldn't be like that. It's good to see that the motorbikes are also using the proper lane. That's very good. It's very hard to uh, enforce it for motorbikes because they're pretty much impossible to catch. Um, they've also stopped a few motorbikes today for illegal helmets. Like they're just wearing bicycle helmets, stuff like that. Which means if they get in an accident, of course, it's not going to do much for them. Um, so that's more of a safety thing. Wait, let's ask this guy. Boss! Boss! Are you giving a ticket for this one? Yeah, uh, light truck ban. Light truck ban? Yeah. Okay, thank From you. From 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay, thank you. So there you go, that's why that truck has been, uh, been stopped here. It's a light truck ban, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So he's getting a ticket for that. Sorry, by the way, if it's loud with me shouting on the camera. It's very hard for them to hear you because there's traffic and he's wearing a helmet, for example. So you really have to shout quite loud. Can go out and take a picture with you? Sure, if you're in the area. But not if you're on one of the buses because <laughs> then you'll, you'll be in trouble for illegal unloading. Um, let's see what's going on. I don't want to go too far that way. One of the other things they're doing is reminding people not to walk in the road. Um, because a lot of people, even though there's like this pretty wide sidewalk, they just walk in the road anyway. And of course, that's a safety issue. Plus, um, it causes traffic because the buses have to avoid you walking in the road. And then gradually, you know, you get one person in the road, then you get two, then you get three. And before you know it, there's a whole crowd of people blocking up one lane. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that they're enforcing today. 
What's the penalty, uh, the amount? Uh, 2,000. 2,000? Yes. Wow, okay, thank you. So 2,000 pesos for uh, ignoring the ban, the truck ban. That's quite substantial, actually. Um, personally, I'm surprised that a lot of the penalties are much worse for private vehicles compared to public vehicles. In my mind, it seems like public vehicles, uh, public transport like buses, their penalties should be worse because they're doing a public service, they're carrying a lot more people. So in my mind, it should be the other way around, that the, those that are being used for tr public transport, their fine should be much higher. Um, I guess it's just, you know, it's been so many years and things haven't changed, so that's why they're really working on it now to, you know, try and increase those penalties and make them act as a deterrent. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry about that, um, I accidentally did something with my app, but I think we're okay now. So what's going on with this bus? They're telling him to move on, move on. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand I'm sad because there's not too much to show you, but on the other hand I'm happy because it means that people are following the rules and that's why... It... Wow, that bus is so loud, I need to buy some reusable earplugs. Um, so yeah, on the one hand, I'm sad that there's not much to show you, but on the other hand, I'm happy because it means it's actually working. People are following the rules. Let me catch up with the chat. How long will the enforcers stay on the road? Will it just be for this week or will it be diminished next week and everything goes back to the way it is? Well, the reality is there's only so many enforcers and there's a lot of roads that need, you know, these enforcers to be working. So. Yes, maybe it won't be the same next week because there's other things they have to do and if you put so many enforcers in one area, that means they're not in other areas. So then people start complaining, hey, there's no enforcer on my street and stuff like that. Thing is, can we blame the MMDA for that? Are they really meant to have like 50,000 people lined across the road, like every single road? It's ridiculous, right? Um, for me, that's not fair. You know, you can't blame them and say, oh, you're not, you're straight this week, but next week you're going to be lazy. It's not about that, it's about manpower. There's only so many guys or women, there's also women of course, there's only so many staff, so many enforcers, and they have to spread them out. So, yes, maybe it won't be the same next week, but that's not their fault, that's the fault of those who refuse to follow the law. Um, we can't just blame everything on them, like, it, it upsets me a little bit because, you know, it's so easy to say, oh, it's their fault, they're not enforcing the law. How about those breaking the law? Why can't people just follow it in the first place? Um, but I think with the increased penalties, once they manage to do that, and then they do more of the CCTV non-contact apprehension, then we'll see a difference. And look, it's really working, like, look at how, let me turn my camera around, look at how smooth the road is right now. It's really working. You need a head-worn mic or hands-free mic. Yeah, you're right, actually. Um, you're, you're very right. So he's telling this bus to not unload. Oops, he's just loaded and unloaded. I hope he's... Ah, don't let him go. Give him a ticket. This guy's lucky. I would have liked to see him stopped. I really... Look, again. Come on, one of you have to catch him. If he loads here, they better catch him. I really hope. Why aren't they doing anything about this bus? Come on. I hope they give a ticket for this one. Don't let him go, this is ridiculous. He's been told several times by many enforcers, don't load, unload. Why are they letting him go? Come on. I want to ask him why he didn't give a ticket. Okay, they managed to stop him again. Sorry. Let's see what's going on.
I'm a little bit disappointed by that one. Probably, it seems like they could have given him a ticket. I'm not sure why he was able to go. I don't know what the paperwork was that he was showing them. Because um, I know so many other buses today have been given tickets. I don't know exactly what, what happened there. Oh, here we go, coding. So this bus shouldn't be on the road today. Let's see if they manage to issue a ticket. So you can see the license plate at the back ends in a one, so it's not allowed to be on the road right now. Let's see what happens. Just watch for a moment. So it looks like they've got a exemption. Oh, it's expired though. Maybe they've got another bit of paper that exempts them. But it should be an official DOTR document. Is that one in his right hand? That's an official document. The one on the left, I'm not sure what that is. Okay, apparently the paperwork's legit. So I guess they're gonna let him go. Wouldn't make sense why they let him through. Yeah, I don't know with that one that was loading, unloading. I wasn't able to see what paperwork he had. This one appears to have a exemption for a coding. I'm surprised that it was given to a bus because I thought it was only for like government officials, um, those that actually need a vehicle to you know do public service. Um, I wasn't aware that a bus could get an exemption from the OTR for coding, but apparently they can. So you learn something every day. I don't know if it's corruption because it's an official document, and I've seen them issued to other people. But I've never seen the issue to a bus before, so not too sure about that one. Let's walk back up this way and see what's going on. Hopefully the quality is okay. I'm not sure how the audio and video is. Um, I've been shooting a normal video also, but I figured I'll go live for a while just to, you know, share what's going on in real time. Yeah, I'm still, still very curious about what happened with that first bus, why they weren't able to give him a ticket. I'm also going to check later about that exemption because I didn't know buses could get the coding exemption. Maybe it's normal, you know, I don't know everything, so it's possible, but I thought it was just for public officials, those that are, you know, government employees that are working, using their vehicle for public service. I didn't realize you could use it for public transport, like a bus. Watching from Chicago, it's very clear in your voice and video. Okay, good, good. So you can see there are still some people that are waiting here, hoping to get picked up illegally. Um, shouldn't be allowed. Somehow it was allowed a little while ago, but I've seen so many of the buses get tickets this morning. Can you interview the officer to check why there is an exemption? Um, I don't know if he'll know, to be honest, but there is a guy that will know. Uh, let's see if we can find him. Bong Nabriha. He's probably around here somewhere. If we can find him, I'll ask him about the exemption, because he'll know. Let me just turn my camera around. I think he's up here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure. See, there's a lot of enforcers here.
They should be strict with the law. They are, they are. Um, I've seen so many of the buses get tickets this morning and um, forced to stop and have their license checked and everything like that. But for whatever reason, the paperwork that that bus um, showed somehow got him away with it. What might have happened is that the bus here was so full, the bus stop, he might have argued that, well, I'm allowed to stop there. I just went a little bit forward because there's no space there. Something like that, I'm not sure. I'm not sure where the guy is that we need to speak to. Let's walk back this way. He might be down by the by the car. Watching here in Doha, Qatar, awesome. What internet did you use? Looks like you have a good ISP. I'm using Globe LTE and it's um, I think 5 pesos per 15 minutes. The downside is that every 15 minutes it disconnects me for like a few seconds. Uh, but otherwise it's very good and there's no limit so that's perfect when you're trying to live stream because it uses a lot of data. Hopefully we can find someone to ask about that exemption. If not, I can always check um, later anyway. Watching here in Cabal, excellent, that's not too far away. Wrong location, my friend, go to Cabal bus stations. Um, yeah, that's a good point actually. There's uh, often a lot of traffic in, in front of those because the bus is misbehaving. It's actually better down this end because um, some of the buses so noisy. Some of the buses slip through and then by this point this is where they actually get stopped or this is where they try to unload because they think oh there's not as many enforcers maybe I can get away with it. So yeah being down this end is actually better anyway. Hi sir watching from Hong Kong. Hello to Hong Kong. Let's go back to where we were a few minutes ago. I mean, the, like I said earlier, it's good and bad news. The good news is that no one's actually, or like very few people are breaking the rules. Uh, but the bad news is that means there's not much to show you. But it is good because the roads are really like, look how smooth it is. It's really flowing well. So yeah, there might not be much to show on camera, but at least it means smooth roads. See a bus up there that appears to be loading or unloading. They might have scared him away. They're telling him, keep going, keep going. And he's saying, no, I want to drop off. Let's see, it's a standoff between the enforcer and the bus. See, the driver thinks it's a joke, he's laughing. And there you go, the enforcer managed to win and scare him away. But you can imagine, there are so many forces here and he still wants to ignore them anyway. That's the reason some people don't follow or respect some official because da da da, how come there is exemptions? Well the exemptions, as far as I know, for the coding, they're meant to be for like public service. So let's say I'm working for the MMDA or let's say, um, I don't know, let's make up a character. Let's say Joe is working for LTO and every day he's driving his vehicle on business, official government business. Well, of course you want to give him an exemption because he's doing a public service. It doesn't make sense to, you know, cause extra cost to the government or to a government organization or agency by forcing them to buy an extra vehicle or to use Uber or Grab or something like that. So as far as I know, that's what the exemptions are for. How a bus managed to get an exemption, I'm not exactly sure, but we are gonna get an answer for that. If not now, um, Let's, let's go. I, I think I know where he is. Let's, let's go and ask and see if we can get an answer. One second. Um, there is a man that would know and he might be sitting in the car down here. Uh, I think he might be on the phone, but let's check.
They should not scare, take immediately his license. Well, the problem is, um, if he moves on, he hasn't actually broken the law, really. Um, it would be hard to find, like, what to penalize him for. Uh, because until he actually loads or unloads, he hasn't done anything wrong other than, you know, blocking a lane. And I'm not sure if there's anything specific for that, you know, for that crime. I don't know if it's a crime, but for that uh, violation. I don't think anyone's in the car. I don't know, we'll get an answer. For those that aren't already following my Facebook page, I recommend you follow now. I'll get an answer and I'll make a Facebook post about how a bus manages to get a coding exemption because I know it's for a government, you know, employees who need the vehicle to service the public, you know, to go about their daily official duties, but I don't know about buses. Uh, what's going on here with this car? I'm not sure. It might be because he entered the yellow lane. I'm not exactly sure in this one. Yeah, I'm not sure what that one was stopped for. It might just be because he entered the yellow lane. Um, they are trying to educate uh, like private vehicles not to use the yellow lane so they can keep it free-flowing for buses. What place in Edsa? Um, I think it's like Guadalupe kind of area. You know with the big, uh, where is it? Somewhere in the background, the big LED signboard, billboard. There's a lady here waiting for a bus. She is going to be waiting for a long time because they're not going to load her and if they do, they're going to get a ticket. She really has to walk up to the bus station. Is the implementation only at that part of Edsa? How about the Cabal to Ortigas section? Can we see how's the traffic flow at Moralfo Avenue? Well, I can't go to another area right now because I'm here. But the truth is there's only so many enforcers and you know it takes a lot of time to actually organize these kind of you know all the way down the road there's teams there's vehicles like motorbikes that can chase people run away we had one earlier actually uh, a private car that was coding they tried to stop him he sped off and they sent a mmda motorbike after him so there's limited resources and they can't you know there's just not enough manpower to cover every road every area so that's why they need to increase the penalties they need to, sorry, I was just trying to see what's going on with the car over there. They need to increase the penalty so that when they do a CCTV non-contact apprehension, it acts as a penalty. This lady might as well just start walking to the bus station because she's wasting her time standing here. You can see that they look and they're like, can we stop? Can we stop? I'm not sure and then they eventually go on. You need a cameraman. Um, no, I think it's okay. I, I manage okay, to be honest. Okay, so I think she finally got the hint and she's now gonna start walking down to the bus station. You know, it, it's just the way it is. You have to walk five minutes, 10 minutes. Go, nope, she's changed her mind. Maybe I still have a chance. <laughs> she's come back. Well, we'll see. Um, you can ask her. The thing is, I don't really like sticking the camera in the face of random people on the street and often they don't really like it themselves, so I try to leave them alone, to be honest. Why does she have to wait there? You mean, why does she have to wait at the bus station or why, does she, why is she waiting here, right here? She's waiting here because this is a convenient place for her, um, but of course where she should be going is the proper bus stop, which is down the road. So, so far, it's actually going very, very well. The roads are very smooth. And uh, it means I don't have much to show you on camera, but it means the operations are going very, very well. Please tell her. I'm pretty sure the enforcers have already told her anyway because they've been telling everyone there's no point standing here, you can't legally load, unload here. Um, but of course some of them think, well, maybe I'll, I'll get lucky. Ask the enforcer to assist. Oops. I'm having a problem with my camera, one second.
ask the enforcer to assist passengers to use the bus. Uh, what's going on here? One sec. 